What's up, YouTube? It's the Java Programmer again. As you can tell, my voice has not gotten better, but uh, maybe I should uh, give up programming and start to sing or something. I don't know. But uh, anyway, in this episode, um, it, well, in the last episode, we saw how we could get rates from the broker, and we displayed them on the screen. Uh, this time, what I'd like to do is I want to start building out the initial infrastructure for our program. And that is, we want to kind of wrap some of these uh, client-specific things into a brokerage client. Um, that way we can use it more generically. As well as... Um, I look back through some of my previous episodes and I do a lot of talking and I'm sure you would rather see me write code so I'm gonna try to talk less and code more we're gonna create three components uh, today one is gonna be a the idea of a program a brokerage client and a signal manager and we're gonna make use of our queue that we wrote back in episodes five and six so if you are unfamiliar with that, you should probably go back and watch uh, those two episodes. But anyway, um, this was our program we wrote last time. Um, maybe not even use it again. We're going to go back to our actual application, and we're going to start from here. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to create a OANDA API program. Uh, program equals new now this class obviously doesn't exist <clears throat> but the idea here is that we can have different programs that do different things and the config of how the program is set up will be inside that class and not here in the main method so for instance maybe we wanted to run a OANDA program or a command line um, chances are in the future we're going to need to come back and change this because we're going to need it to be more generic but for now uh, this probably is what's going to make the most sense we're going to need our event queue our event router okay we are going to take our program here and we're going to pass it the config and the router and so these items will happen well, let's bring those back for a second those things will happen inside the program on how it sets up the connections in, in between all the pieces that are going to be running but for right now we need to um, bring these classes in it looks like we've commented them out sometime in the past alright so we have those now this is a new class doesn't exist yet so we need to create this and we're gonna put it in the package dot programs um, that doesn't exist so it'll and where'd that go there it is and oh and API program and just for fun, let's have this extend program. And so what that is, is going to do is we're going to have an abstract class. Um, public abstract class program. And in here, we're going to put our config so that way anything that extends this <clears throat> will have to um, uh, pass a configuration helper in into it so that it'll be available with whatever program um, 
whatever class extends this program. So if we do that, this should now throw an error message. We're going to have to add a constructor. Um, that's not correct because our constructor here needs to look like that one. See, create constructor. That's better. Get rid of this one. Then we'll take this line, put it in this one, and we'll get rid of that one. All right. So this is more or less just a kind of config type class. It's going to hook up some things. So our OANDA API program is going to need a brokerage client, which we don't have that. Let's get rid of these errors first. Before I go down that road, sorry. Um, move, move these out of here, put those over here because they'll eventually get done in this class. This class, I think, is um, I think we're ready to go with this class. So basically, we create a queue, create a router, create a program, which we could create any type of program, but for now, we're just going to do an OANDA API program. Uh, and then we start the main loop to dispatch any events that go into the event queue. Um, the thing is that this program and the things that are inside that program do not have access to that event queue. So we're going to have to add that into here. And what might be better is I'm thinking what might be better is if we move all this logic into the program. That seems wrong to me. So let's just go with this for now. I think we might have to change this later, but <clears throat> for now, we will make our program do this. So we have an events queue, we have a router, we have a config. I need to create a brokerage client. So uh, let's see, broke. Bridge client client equals new. How about we say oh and uh, API brokerage client and we pass in the event queue. Uh, probably should pass in the config and the event queue. So what this is going to do is the idea here is the OANDA brokerage client is going to handle rates. And when a rate comes in, it's going to create a rate event and stuff it into the queue. And then we're going to create a signal manager. And the signal manager is going to listen for those rates. Uh, I don't know that we're going to get to that in this movie, uh, this video, because I've noticed that my time is getting away from me. So let's try to get this brokerage client written, and then uh, we'll get into hooking this up in the next video. So right now, um, we need to create a new package for these clients. So a org dot, no, um, maybe I could take one of these. Uh, off of here. Yeah, that's what I want. So brokerage clients. So the idea is that all brokerage clients are going to implement an interface. The reason for this is so that they can have the same method. For instance, like get open orders or place order or close order. Uh, and we'll have an interface that's the same, but translated into each specific broker's uh, client API. So for right now, uh, let's create an interface. We're going to call it uh, brokerage client. I don't think it's going to do anything. 
Um, but our oh, and a brokerage client will so import that. But our oh, and a brokerage client will implement it. So this is going to go under brokerage clients and it implements this interface. Yep, that's what we want. And there we have it. If I close this, I get an error message and it'll say create constructor. There's our constructor. And yes. So here we have a brokerage client. Now this is where we're going to take our code from last week, or I'm sorry, last video and put in this uh, file. So if we look at our test rates, we see that we have um, our rate table and an FX client. We're gonna just copy all this right in here. Um, FX client, so client equals, API dot create game. If you want to know why it's called the game, you can uh, watch the last video. We get our um, client. Oops, I mean equals client dot get rate table. Oh, probably throws an exception. Yep, I'll handle that in a minute. Uh, we're gonna set the client with the threads. <coughs> See what else we need to do. Um, so we need to log in and we need to register a handler, which is going to be itself. So log in, username, password. Oh, don't need to do this. We already did that earlier. <coughs> and add this. So that means that we've got to extend uh, FX event. to add in this try catch. Uh, let's see, try goes here. Oops. Let's add it around this, tab these in. Sorry, you're having to watch me copy and paste code, but it's better than writing code. All right, so that takes care of that. Now we need to add our unimplemented method, which is the handle method. Uh, last time we had to cast this um, event info into an FX. I think it was rate event info event equals. We cast, uh, this is going to be an event info, cast the event info into that. Uh, and then we're going to do something like this, event, uh, we need to save our event queue up here. These need to all be private. Just getting behind the times. All right, so we have an event queue. Set a this dot event queue. Whoops. Equals event queue. There we go. So down here we're gonna say something like event queue dot add um, our event. But the problem is is that this needs to be of our type event, which is in here, not the rate info event. So we're going to have to write a sp um, we're going to have to write a custom event or what we can do is we can just create a rate event um, that copies in the the different things that we need out of this event, but I'm not going to do that right now. We will come back to this in the next video. I want to make sure and get our client here set up. So let's see. This was our old 
Um, this was our old class, which we don't need anymore. Uh, let's look at the API program. This should be, yep. So here we also will register. Let's go ahead, let's do this. We're gonna create a rate, whoops. We're gonna create a rate event class, which doesn't exist. And we're gonna register that with a signal manager. And that doesn't exist either. So let's create uh, create class. Um, uh, create class rate event. This is gonna go in our events. And yes. So we have a rate event class. And we're going to create a signal manager, create class signal manager. So we're going to create another um, set of programs. We're going to call them managers. OK, now that we've got a whole bunch of classes created and added, and we've got lots of red errors, uh, this video has gone way too long. So. Um, Please watch the next video as we will uh, finish this off and try to have a working program by the end. This is the Job Programmer. Uh, see you in the next video.